Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video we will start with the location stuff. So what we will do in this video is just to request the location permissions by the user because we really need to consider some stuff there. Because if you take a look in our manifest file, we have those three location permissions here and that background location permission is only needed for Android Q. Below Android Q, we don't explicitly need to request that background location permission. There we can just track the location in the background by default. So we need to differentiate between Android Q and not Android Q. And to handle all that location permission stuff, I included a library called Easy Permissions that, as the name says, will make it very easy for us to handle all that location permission stuff. So for that, I want to create a utility class and a utility function that just checks if the user already accepted the location permissions or not, because we will need that function quite often in this app. And I want to create that utility class inside of our other package here. So create a new Kotlin file or class here, call it tracking utility. And this will be an object because it will only have functions we don't need an instance of, of this class. And inside of this tracking utility object here, we want to create a function has location permissions. That function will need the context. And that is equal to if, because now we want to check if the current device is running on Android Q or not. So we check if build dot version dot SDK int is less than build dot version codes dot Q. So that means the device is not running on Android Q. And in that case, we don't need to explicitly request that background location permission. So instead, what we can do is we can just write easy permissions dot has permissions. And here you can see we need to pass the context, which we pass as a parameter here. And as a second parameter, we just need to pass the permissions. We want to check if the user accepted those. And that is manifest. And really make sure to use that Android manifest here, not that Java util jar dot permission dot access find location and access course location. Those two permissions are needed if the device is not running on Android Q. But if it is, we will also request the background location permission. So for the else block, we simply want to copy that here, paste it below, and we also want to check for access background location. So just if this if statement here confuses you a little bit, it just checks if the device of the user is running on Android Q. If it is not, it will go into this block here, and it will return if the user has those two permissions and if the device is running on Android Q it will go in the else block instead and return whether this returns true or false. So that's it for this function. Now we actually need to request the permissions and I want to do that in our run fragment because that is basically the first real fragment that shows up and let's actually switch into that and here I want to create a function to request those permissions. Private function request permissions and first of all, we of course want to check if the user already accepted those permissions. That's why we made that utility function. So we check if tracking utility dot has location permissions and we pass require context here. If you don't know what that means, because we're inside of a fragment, we just don't have access to the real context of the activity. So the activity, if we refer to that, is actually nullable, as you can see on that question mark. And we instead use require context that just makes sure that the context is not equal to null here. And in that case, if we already have permissions, then we simply want to return because then we don't want to request the permissions, of course. And if the user didn't accept the permissions before, then we again need to check if his device is running on Android Q or not. So if build.version.sdkint is less than build.versioncodes, dot q. And in that case, we don't want to call has location permissions this time. Instead, we want to call easy permissions dot request permissions. And here you can see we need to pass our fragment, which is easy since we are inside of a fragment. Then we need to pass a rational, which is just a text that will show up in a dialogue if the user already denied that permission. 
and we request it again, then it will basically tell him, hey, this app needs location permissions to work properly, so please accept them. And then we need a request code just to get the permission results. So if the user accepted or declined the permissions and we finally specify the permissions we actually want to request here. So let's start by passing this for the fragment. Then as a rationale, I just want to write, you need to accept location permissions to use this app. So that is just the string that will show up in the dialog here. Then as a request code, I will create a constant here, request code, location permissions, location permission. Then we can copy that request code to go into our constants file and simply add it here, const val request code location permission and I set it to zero. Then we can go back to run fragment, import that request code from our constants file and now we need to pass the permissions we want to request. And since we are on a device that is not Android Q, which you can see on that if statement, we only need to request manifest dot permission dot access course location and manifest dot permission dot access find location. And in case the device is running on Android Q, so in the else block here, actually let's make a little space here so I can read that better. In the else block, we can just copy this request permissions block, paste it, and here we just want to duplicate that last line and also make this permission request for access background location. So very similar to what we did in the tracking utility object. And now that is not much more complicated than requesting permissions by default. So without that easy permissions library, but what that library makes very easy for us is to actually handle that result. Because in Android Q, we also have that option if we deny the permissions and the permissions are requested again and we deny again, then we have that option to deny them permanently basically so that the app cannot request them again. And in that case, with the easy permissions library, we can very easily show a dialog to the user that tells him that he permanently denied the permissions and he can only enable them in his app settings. And that dialog will lead that user to the app settings. But I will show you later what I actually mean with that. Let's actually first implement a permission callback to get the result of those permissions we just requested. For that, we need to implement an interface here, which is easy permissions dot permission callbacks. Then you can see we need to implement some functions here in our fragment. Let's do that below here, press control plus I, and we need to implement on permissions denied and on permissions granted. And we actually only need on permissions denied because in that case, we want to check if the user permanently denied the permissions or not. And in that case, we want to show him that dialogue I talked about. And if he denied them the first time, then we just want to show that rational instead. So we just want to request the permissions again, because they are really mandatory to use our app here. So let's actually go inside of this on permissions denied. And here we want to check if easy permissions dot some permission permanently denied. So in that case, the user permanently denied one of our permissions that we requested. In that case, we need to pass our fragment again and the permissions that were denied. So that's just a parameter from that function. That is a list that contains all permissions that were denied here. And in that case, if the user denied some permissions permanently, we want to write app settings dialog dot builder. Here we need to pass our fragment again call.build and dot show. So this is exactly the dialog I talked about that will lead the user to the app settings where he can finally enable the permissions again if he permanently denied them. And in case he didn't permanently deny a permission but he denied them for the first time or he just denied them in a way that is not permanent, then we will go inside of this else block and simply request permissions again. And inside of this on permissions granted function, we can just remove that to do statement here and leave this blank because we won't need this. But since we implemented interface here, we also need to implement that on permissions granted function. And now there's one more thing we need to do. And that is we need to override 
on request permissions result because that is the function that handles the, uh, the, the permissions result by default in Android. And we basically just need to redirect that result to our easy permissions library. So easy permissions actually knows what the result was of our permissions and it can call that on permissions denied function or on permission granted function for us. So just what we want to do inside of this function here is call easy permissions dot on request permissions result. Here we will pass our request code, our permissions, our grant results, and this as a receiver. That is really important. So that just means that this is the fragment that will receive the result of our request. So if this confused you a little bit with that on request permissions result function, that is just the Android framework function that gets called whenever we request permissions. And since easy permissions is not an Android framework function and doesn't have access to that by default, we just need to call that on request permissions result function from easy permissions with the parameters of our Android framework function here. So we just redirect those parameters to easy permissions so easy permissions can actually do its job here. So now the really last thing we need to do is to actually call our request permissions function inside of our onview creator function. So otherwise we won't even request anything, of course. And then we can run our app and try out if everything is working. There we go. And if we now switch into the run fragment, the permission dialog should actually show up. Let's press on continue. And you can see allow running app to access this device's location. And let's say we click on deny now. Then you can see that rational shows up. You need to accept location permissions to use this app. If we now click on cancel, then nothing will happen. But if we switch back in the run fragment, then this will show up again. If we now press OK, we will be prompted to accept the permissions again. And now we have that deny and don't ask again option. If we click on that, then another dialog will show up, which is actually really bad readable here, but doesn't really matter. You can style that as you want. And it tells us this app may not work correctly without the requested permissions. Open the app settings screen to modify app permissions. And if we now click on OK, Easy Permissions will lead us to this app settings screen. And here we can click on permissions. And you can see we didn't allow any permissions here, but we can allow location permission here. And let's click allow all the time. And that will mean our app now has location permissions. So that's actually the true power of the easy permissions library because it makes this stuff really easy. And yeah, I hope you learned something new in this video, especially with that easy permissions library, because I don't think that many people know it, but I really like it. If you did, then please leave a comment below. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you in the next video. Bye bye.